I'm going to invite now my good friend and pal, your charismatic MC for the day, who's going to be introducing all of our speakers today. Mr. Ezra Kaltoum is celebrating his birthday today. Woo! <laughs> Ezra, you can speak from here. So, uh, is it live? So, uh, I'm very happy to be here to introduce the speakers. I'm very happy that we got an amazing lineup, which is going to... Hey, Sorry, that's yours. That's mine. <laughs> I didn't even test it. It's okay. But it's, it's not okay because you don't have one now. I will have one. Don't worry. So, uh, welcome here. Welcome to these sites. We're going to have an amazing time. Uh, our first speaker is uh, Veronica Valeros. Bienvenida, Veronica. Veronica Valeros is a security researcher from Argentina. She has been uh, in si since 2013 uh, at uh, as a malware analyst in cognitive threat analytics, which is part of Cisco Systems. Uh, they are based in Prague, uh, uh, Czech Republic. And she specializes in malware ne network traffic analysis, network behavioral patterns, and threat categorization. Prior to CTA, Veronica worked independently on various projects involving data analysis, machine learning, and malware sandboxing. Veronica is also the co-founder of Mata's Lab Hackerspace in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Bienvenida, Veronica. The, 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 it's yours. I'll get you mic now. Ezra, offer this last to you and to our friends, Veronica. Cheers. Of course you do. <laughs> well done. I was going to give you this one. Uh, so okay. it's, it's in case you're right. a lot of courage, you can use your thumb. You can move your hand here so you get up here on the screen. It's a little easier to sit there and do it. Like this. So the way we get better is by sharing our ideas and putting them out in the world. You can put it in a, in a pocket. Yeah. And also by drinking this tea. Also drinking the water. Cool. OK. Can you hear me? Yeah. And may I? Yes. OK, how about now? Hi, hi. Hi. Can I hold it? You can hold it, but we prefer it without. Yeah. Is it okay? Now? Can you hear me? Yes. Your clicker? Awesome. We advance with this. Okay. There you go. Okay, so. The stage is yours. So many people. Cool. Uh, it's, uh, it's very nice to be here in Tel Aviv for the first time. Um, and so, so far, an amazing crowd. So. Um, um, I'm here, I'm Veronica, I'm here to talk about the dark side of adware, uh, malware and attacks infiltration. And um, as I as they said before, I'm working in Prague, Czech Republic. Um, I'm a malware researcher. Um, I Basically, in summary, what I do is to look at uh, text files with proxy logs every day, uh, nine hours a day, so yeah, it's fun. Um, <laughs> And um, I also love uh, coding Python, war driving, log picking, and I uh, also play StarCraft in my free time. Uh, so, cool. so let's talk about AdWare. Uh, if at some point you cannot hear me, uh, I just got a call on Monday, so I should raise your hand and I'm going to try to speak louder, right? So let's talk about AdWare. Uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with AdWare, right? It's advertising-oriented software. Um, um, the, the goal of this type of software is just uh, make profit through showing advertising, that they can do that uh, in many ways, such as uh, redirections when you visit some site, and uh, pop-ups, or other type of ad injection. And uh, there is always this, um, this fact that when this, sometimes this type of software is legitimate, <coughs> and sometimes there is a line that they cross, and this type of software is start to become a threat to organizations, right? So when this type of software do this ad injection uh, without user consent, then there is starting to become a problem, right? So. Uh, here's an example of uh, AdWare that you can install uh, on, by not knowing that you're installing it. In this case, you're installing a merge MP3, but if nobody reads this text, right? But it says there that a special offer to go along with uh, 
Emerge MP3 is FlashBeat, and FlashBeat is a, a browser add-on that will inject advertising in your browser. And you're actually clicking on that. And that's how this stuff gets through you. Some ad an injection is very obvious, and you can get screens like that. For example, every time I go to visit my family, I get the family computer looks like this, and I'm like, what? <laughs> right? But it's, it's very often, right? And some other advertising is not that obvious. Uh, here is, for example, a screen on, of ad, um, browser extension that is uh, injecting advertising on YouTube. And you can see several things. First, we can really notice that here in the top, there is the web page is broken because of the ad injection. But if it weren't for that, you probably, if you are not an experienced user, um, you wouldn't notice that this is not a wanted advertising actually legitimate by YouTube, right? But YouTube doesn't do this. So in this case, um, it's an unwanted application uh, uh, injecting this type of advertising. So um, what about this, right? It's just advertising. Who cares? Uh, that's the general feeling about this, this type of hardware, right? Um, but is it? Is it this the case that is just advertising, or is something else that we need to, to take a look at? And um, we wanted to actually do some research about this because uh, we, <coughs> in our product, we look at network traffic and we analyze a lot of a lot of traffic, and adware is everywhere, right? So we wanted to say like, okay, should we say the customers that they should care about adware or not? So we studied like more than two years of network traffic in more than 80 companies, and uh, we found that there were more than 4,000 uh, different adware variants that were crossing the line, right? These malicious adware variants, um, which was impressive, right? And we also noticed that during these two years of analysis, I'm showing here on the, uh, the last five months to make it more visible, but this, uh, this uh, landscape looks like this for the last two years that I've been there. So um, more than 70% of the companies in our customer base have at least one ad one injection. And that's a lot. Imagine that we are talking about hundreds of companies, right? And all of them have this one of these, at least one uh, of these ad one injection, infections. So this is very worrying. And uh, another fact that we found out is that 50% of these adware infections were caused by malicious browser extensions. That means something that gets through and goes directly to the browser is not something that you go to the, um, manage the programs in Windows and you are going to remove. You, even if you go to a browser and you list the plugins and extensions, this, this stuff is not there. So it's very hard to kind of actually find it, right? And uh, there are some antivirus solutions that uh, they do some browser protection, but not so many. So even if you have an antivirus, this stuff is just gets there, right? So what we did to analyze it, because uh, I mentioned that I do behavioral network traffic analysis, so I wanted to say, okay, there is a lot of data here, right? So I'm going to group that in, in groups of ad injection servers. Uh, things that look similar and um, behave in the same way and that are still related to ad injection uh, uh, adware. And we found more than 50 groups and every group more uh, has, is, they are huge and sometimes involves hundreds of uh, server IPs and uh, hundreds of thousands of domains. So this is a very large structure, right? So what are these groups of ad injection servers? So you can see here some, some examples. Um, Every group has some similarities between each other. Uh, in this case, uh, we, we kind of, uh, this is easily to see that the URLs, uh, even the, the hosts are different. Uh, you can see the domain names are different and they are often hosted in different servers, but they share some kind of pattern, right? And also these ones, they also have the same kind of URL structure. And we found that they are not very clever. They are just sharing the pattern and all these servers are related together. So we say, okay, we, we could analyze these two years of traffic, make more than 50 groups. And how is the, how is the scenario, how this works together, right? 
Um, so uh, every one of these requests uh, shows you ends up showing you one of these, right? But what we found is that one browser add-on that usually uh, get, communicates with more than one of these groups of an injection servers. And this is very interesting, just remember that, um, because it's going to be important later. So uh, this is the uh, minimalist uh, scenario that we came with. And probably we oversimplified, but for the sake of it, it's, 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 uh, it's useful. So software bundles are the main source of these, uh, these browser add-ons or other toolbars or PUAs or something like that. And uh, every one of these versions of AdWare, what it's doing is communicating with one of these injection servers and they're doing uh, three, they have three main functionalities. Uh, one, of this, one of those is um, injecting advertising, right? Uh, we all know that because it's a more visible to the user, right? We, we see the advertising. Another thing that they are doing is exfiltrating browsing information. And uh, more worrying uh, still is that uh, this type of browser add-on, we found that uh, they are capable of delivering malware, actual malware, right? So this was, this was the point where we we said, okay, this is something that we really need to, to, to take a look further and actually uh, start telling people that they should remediate these type of infections because they pose a real risk, right? So uh, when we say that exfiltration, we, are not, we don't mean this type of exfiltration that the adware is actually taking out your documents, right? But it's other type of exfiltration that people usually Maybe they don't think it's something uh, to worry about. But we found that this type of hardware, what, what they take out is every request that you, you make in, the, in your web browser, they send it to one of these injection servers. So if you go to Google to certain video, that URL of the video that you visit is going to the servers. Uh, if you go to your home banking application, that same URL is going outside. If you, you are checking your email, if you are logging into some uh, application, all that information is, sending, is being sent outside. And looking through the data, we found uh, in those URLs that are sent outside, we found user credentials, uh, internal corporate sites that are never meant to go outside, right? It, that's why you have an internal infrastructure in your network, uh, so uh, your employees can can work in there and access these internal sites without uh, exposing this to the outside. But because you have one of these infections, every every site that you visit in your internal corporate network is going outside, right? Uh, we also found that uh, these type of browser extensions and uh, other adware is exfiltrating also the screen size of your browser and then your system, operating system, the browser plugins that you have installed, if you have Flash, if you have Java, if you have, um, I don't know, uh, Silverlight, um, the add-ons that you have installed, all this type of information, they should grab it and take it outside. And uh, we also found company uh, information, uh, reservation of plane tickets, and uh, more, more interesting is that we also found that some of these type of adware, what they send outside is what type of antivirus solution you are, you are working with. So if you have some kind of page that you want to access and was blocked by your antivirus or proxy, and it says, okay, this is blocked, by uh, McAfee or this is blocked by Bluecoat, that page, they, they, the browser extensions are going to try to inject advertising on that page. And by doing so, they get the name of the um, solu security solution you have in place. So they actually have a lot of information, right? Uh, so what, what can you do with this? This is, this is very interesting because most people think that they should uh, okay, this information doesn't mean anything. The, no, nobody's actually using that. But remember, we, every browser extension is sending the same type of information to more than one server, sometimes four or five. So it's replicated on the internet. And if these guys have a, a little, little of data mining, they can map, for example, an internal, a complete internal infrastructure of a company. 
they can get access uh, to accounts that are poorly secure and send user and password to the URL. They can also get statistics about, okay, which uh, extension or add-on or plugin is more commonly used. That's how uh, then exploits work by, by exploiting vulnerabilities in this most used uh, stuff, right? So um, uh, this is this is something that uh, it seems a bit scary. If I'm a user, I would very worry worry a lot about this, right? But we also say that we found that uh, this type of adware can deliver malware. And this is something that we suspected for a long time, that, okay, we have 70% of our customers infected with adware. Okay, it's just adware, right? But what if, for a moment, we think that this type of adware can actually uh, escalate into a more severe type of infection? Is it possible um, for one and a half year or two, we, we haven't seen this until uh, January this year. And suddenly we saw a spike on, of, uh, on some infections in our customers. Users just got infected a lot. And uh, we found that the uh, type of software, or let's say, um, <laughs> that was associated to these inf infections was called DNS changer. And looking for information on the internet, we found some um, reports that say DNS changer is just adware, so don't worry about that. And some other reports saying that, okay, this is really a malware, so we started looking at that. Is this adware is something that we should say to the customers, worry about that, or, is, or, or, um, or not, right? So we did a joint research with one of my colleagues, uh, Ross Gibb, he's a reverse engineering. Um, uh, so he actually took a look at the binary and reverse it. And we found some interesting things in this piece of, of software. We found that for getting into the system, there is no user interaction for the installation. That means that it will get installed in your computer and you will not notice. Also, that uh, it alters the DNS settings, uh, and then changes actually the name servers of your computer without your consent, of course. It has multi-layer obfuscation, uh, hide and persistent mechanisms. It communicates with a series of, I, I think, like between 100 and 200 domains that are all registered in different places of uh, in US and in Europe, and. Um, and the registrar's information is, is, they are not very well known, and if you are legitimate, why would you spread your infrastructure so much, right? Um, we also found that it contains a backdoor functionality that is not ideal if your software is legitimate. Um, so far we saw, we didn't see this functionality working in real life in the network, but by looking at the code, it was there, right? And uh, it also installs a root certificate that in whatever, it means that it can change if it injects advertising that, as we find out, it does. Uh, it can also modify the HTTPS sites that you are visiting, right? So um, it's, it's very interesting and it's clear that by these features, it's actually malware. So um, in summary, DNS changer um, is, a, is a Trojan that it, as I said before, it changes the name servers of your system. And what, what does mean? What that means? So imagine that you are loading some page, and that page has some Google Analytics content that you want to load. That's very common. 99% of the websites have that, right? So your browser is going to want to load that web, uh, Google Analytics resource. So it's going to do a query to the name server uh, that is configuring your system to say, okay, I need, who is, give me the IP of Google Analytics, I need to ask something, right? And that name server is, is giving you back the IP, but because they changed that IP, those IPs, when you ask for Google Analytics, you are going to make a query um, to a malicious server IP that the name server, malicious name server, responded to you that belongs to Google Analytics. So, you have a malicious IP that is not the real one that is associated with Google Analytics. And so you say, okay, you don't know that, right? So you say, okay, uh, malicious server, I want this resource at Google Analytics. And that query actually goes to a malicious server. 
what they do is they do a, a legitimate request to Google Analytics for that resource, and when the response goes back, they inject some JavaScript in the middle. And for now, that JavaScript is just to show some advertising, but it doesn't have any limitations. You can inject anything there. For example, some extra kit landing page or some uh, other type of attack to the, to the user browser, right? And because it has a root certificate, um, it can also inject stuff in your, when you are going to your home banking, for example. And that means that they might be able to steal your banking credentials. So um, suddenly, this escalated from some simple adware uh, massive infections that they actually did nothing more than inject advertising to some more severe scenario, say like, okay, I actually have an infection in my system that um, is, is going to probably steal information from me and it, it can, they can access to my system and so on. So um, we already say, okay, uh, we, we saw this type of Trojan being delivered by AdWare, but can we confirm that this was real, really the case? Because uh, we need evidence, right? Um, and uh, we found out that yes, in fact, in every single analysis that we did for infected users before the NS changer, there was always one of these AdWare variants installed. And, um, it's very interesting because uh, we also, we were not sure, okay, it may be coincident that just because we have 70% of our customers infected with that one, it may be just a coincidence, right? But we also found in the traffic related to the NS changer when it communicates with its uh, command and control that uh, in the H HTTP request, it, they were sending information about the adware associated to that installation. And on those names, we found these very same names, right? System healer, one system care, and so on and so on. So it was, the, the change was, uh, was, very, was close, and we kind of confirmed that, okay, if you have any type of these type of adwares, then it means that you are not safe, right? You have like an open door uh, in your organization that you can get infected with, with really bad stuff. So in the end, it's not, it's not just advertising, right? So um, our conclusion was that other infections, yeah, we should care about that and we should, we should solve that, right? It's very hard to say. It's, it's very easy to say and very hard to do because we, every company has hundreds and thousands of users. Um, so I, I, my focus was like, okay, I, I am a security specialist. I have friends that are doing incident response and we all, uh, when we talk, we, we all say the same, right? We, we work to protect you, the user. And, uh, we do the best we can, but in reality, uh, things look a very different like this picture. We think that ideally our organization is covering by this, um, this um, layer of security that nobody can go through, right? And reality is, looks like this. <laughs> we do the best we can, but still looks like this. And, and we say, okay, let's work a lot and make change this picture. And it still, it looks like this, right? So it's very frustrating. And uh, after two years, um, it's, uh, it's still, uh, the picture still looks the same and we have still 70% of the companies in our customer base infected. So uh, we thought that, okay, maybe it's not us that we should make the change, right? Uh, if, if it's just IT security guys and incident response uh, people that should defend this, the, this battle is already lost. We, it, there is no way we can change this picture. Um, so, but you, you are the user, right? You are there in your computer uh, looking at the stuff and installing the software that you need. So uh, if you change, if you take the security like uh, in your mind, you can help to change this kind of landscape, right? And uh, in the end, uh, it doesn't matter how much we protect you, the user, 
if you cannot protect yourself. So uh, the, the, the point is like, just start thinking about the security of your host and uh, start making a change. And it's as easy as, uh, just, you don't need to read all this. It's just sometimes checking out the stuff and uh, saying, okay, I don't want to install this, right? So um, thank you very much. I don't know if we have time for questions. Uh, we have two minutes for okay. questions. So um, ask them if they have any questions. This is for so does, does anybody have a question? This uh, research is private uh, It's public here for the first time. Uh, we presented an analysis of DNS changer in April in besides Calgary and all the stuff is online. So you can check it there. And it, if you want more technical stuff, you can email me. It's, it's open to share. Thank you, Veronica. Gracias.